name of Jesus. We know God. By the end of time. All men shall call you blessed. All men shall call you Lord. All men shall call you king. All men shall call you the owner of all things. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today I am I have decided to conclude on the series I started. As I've already said it, as an interesting piece we are trying to uh, to receive from God. We're looking at the three types of anointing or the triple anointing or three levels of anointing. We spoke about the anointing of a priest, the anointing of the prophet, and today we will be talking about the anointing of the king. Our Lord Jesus Christ functioned in these three categories of anointing. He is anointed priest. He is anointed prophet. He is anointed king. I think the Bible college student should be nodding their head now that it is true. Because we study that in soteriology. Is that right? Very good. That's true, isn't it? Praise God. Jesus functioned in these three levels of function. As a priest, as a prophet, and as a king. As a king, which is his first and foremost mission to enthrone the kingdom of God on this earth. God made him king. The Bible said he is the king of all kings. He is the lord of all lords. And as a king, in order to establish the kingdom of liberty, the kingdom of freedom, require the power of the priesthood. As we have studied the other time, the kingdom without power will crumble. The kingdom without power, there is no authority in that kingdom. So every king required a priesthood function. David was anointed king. Samuel halfway functioned in the room of a priest. Zadok took over the, 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 the ministry of a priest in David's kingdom. The priest is so empowered in such a way that they are the mediator between the king and God. So by ministering unto God in the office of a priesthood, they receive instruction from God to the king. For every instruction that comes from God to the king is what we call the prophetic message. Amen. The prophetic message. Because the king doesn't know before the message comes. So God in dealing with the king deals through the, the priest. For every prophetic message comes as a result of the priest being in touch with God. Are you with me? So like we have these young ones today coming out of Bible college. They are straight prophets. Have you noticed that? They are straight prophets. They have never even functioned in the room of a priesthood. They are straight prophets. It doesn't work like that. It's not about looking at the fivefold ministry and thinking which one carry more honor. We haven't had evangelists today because we thought evangelists have no honor. There's no honor attached to an evangelist. No. The fivefold ministry is equal in function. That's what the Bible says, what fivefold ministry. 
Amen. Amen. They are the same in ranking. It is all their function that differ. Are you with me? You don't become an evangelist to be promoted to become a pastor. No. If you're an evangelist, you're an evangelist. Is somebody hearing me? You don't become a pastor to be promoted to become a prophet. No. If you are a prophet, you are a prophet. So listen carefully. You don't become a pastor thinking that, oh, I have been in ministry for 30 years, so now I'm an apostle. No. Thank you. An apostle is an apostle. Are you with me? None of these offices is occupied by promotion. It is a calling. Can I repeat that again? It is a calling. The teacher is needed in the body of Christ in order to perfect the saints. There are people who are gifted as teachers. God has endowed them with so wisdom and knowledge and understanding in the scriptures. Amen. So, a teacher can become a pastor. A teacher can do the work of an evangelist. A teacher can become, what? Can do the work of an evangelist. A teacher can prophesy. Amen. Are, are you with me? An apostle can do the work of an evangelist. Are you with me? An apostle can do, can teach. An apostle can be a pastor. Are you with me? And an apostle can be a prophet, can function as a prophet, not as necessarily in the room of a prophet. Are you with me? An evangelist can teach. An evangelist can teach. Are you with me? Evangelists can do a little bit of pastoring. Because if you go and bring the souls and you don't have a pastor, you must try to pastor them. Then if you get a pastor, you leave, continue to do, you hand over to the pastor. Are you with me? So look at the representations of these fingers, fivefold ministry. This is the featherless outreach. This is an evangelist. The middle finger is the featherless outreach. That's an evangelist. Have you seen that? This is not even an apostle. Amen? This is the apostle. This is the teacher. This is the finger that goes into your ear. Ecoutez bien. Are you listening? Oh, thank you. So, this is reaching out to you. Are you feeling cold this morning? Ruby, are you feeling cold? With your husband sitting by you, you're feeling cold? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Uh, please, sit in the middle. That's right. So this is what this is this is the finger that goes into the ear as a teacher. Is that right? Very good. So this is the love finger. Is a pastor. The pastor has the grace to love. He has got the grace to withstand anything. He has the capacity. To be patient with our mistakes. But you don't do the same thing with an evangelist. Evangelist is not patient. That is why he can't pastor for a long time. You will scatter everybody. You've all heard evangelistic messages. They have no mercy. For the hearers. Do you get the whole thing? That's right. So here is the apostle. Amen. No, I said this is the apostle. And this is who? The prophet. The prophet warns. Okay? It warns. Be careful. Amen. So the fivefold ministry is a function each and every one of us 
will be willing to covet. The Bible said, covet ye the sincere gift of the spirit. Coveting and a holy coveting is not evil. So in the coveting that leads into killing somebody, into harming somebody, into wanting to destroy somebody, that coveting is sin. But we can covet the spirit. The scripture says so. Covet ye the sincere gift of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Before I became a pastor, I wanted to be a pastor. So anything you don't want, God doesn't dump it on you. It does not usurp our will. God does not usurp on our will. When we surrender that will to him and we say, here am I, use me. And it's sincere from the way we demonstrate it, the Lord will touch you. The Lord will use you. The Lord will call you. Are you with me? Amen. Each and every one of us are called. He say amen. amen. Each and every one of us are called. Be <laughs> we are called. Each and very good. Each and every one of us are called. And I will deepen this by telling you that the Bible said we are royal priesthoods. So we are a priesthood generation. But out of the many, seven in the priesthood generation, a few are chosen. And these are the people who endear themselves, who want to be beyond other limits. Are you with me? Praise God. So, and as the Lord chooses, fewer are faithful. Even fewer are faithful. He could choose a lot, and a lot I ministry today, but not all are faithful. Those who are faithful to the Lord, he puts so much grace, and the expectation is so big to reach out to the people. God loved the faithful. Not the chosen. Amen? Amen? Because the Bible said, not all who say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. You will be surprised that pastors are going to end in hell. Pastors are going to end in hell. And I sit down and then I meditate on this part. Of our calling. That we will not be a castaway. So it is important. You have to be praying for pastors. So they stay strong. They stay faithful. They stay honorably to serve God. They mustn't usurp God's portion for themselves. All the glory goes to God. And if he release something to you, you take it with thanksgiving. Say amen. amen. Praise God. So, here we are. A kingdom of what? Of priests. And then, a calling into the prophetic. We've tackled that. Now, let's go to our scriptures now. In order to refresh your mind, I'll go to the main scripture again. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. Why do we waste ourselves? If indeed this tag is on us as peculiar people, born again people, people called by God through Jesus, the people who experience a transformed life. The Bible said we are a 
extraordinary people. So in comparison with any other person, there is no match. That is, not, that is why we are not in a race with the world. We are not in a race with the world. We won't be sad because the world is advancing. We won't be sad because the world is prospering. God has made us extraordinary people. That is why those who compare themselves with others are not wise. Don't compare. You are unique in your track of calling. You will notice that there is no second person like you. Even your daughter doesn't look too much like you. You are the original. You are the first beauty. She is not much beautiful than you. Come on church. Look at yourself now. As children of God. Look at your age. And look at how our children have wasted their years. Have you noticed that? They've wasted their years. They can go to many beauty parlors. They can paint their faces like what? Like owl. Because, because the beauty, if you do it too much, you look like an owl. Oh, yes, because I think the mirror is deceiving most people. <laughs> Say, I am unique. I am, unique. I am peculiar. I am unique. Because of the Spirit of God, through Jesus, that have come to live in us. And I said, we are given such room of office in order to demonstrate the excellency of his calling. The excellency of his touch upon our life. And to let darkness know that it has no room to overcome it. Amazing. Hallelujah. So, the third part says that we are kings. We are kings. Forget, in the kingdom of God, gender is not it's not a barrier. We are addressed by the same gender. If it's he, is he for the she, is he for the he. If it's man, in actual fact, it's referring to human species. So, the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 6 says that, and he have made us kings. Oh my God. And he have made us what? Kings and priests. Oh, I love that. Am I teaching heresy? No. He has made us what? Kings and priests. So that we will not go for a higher power. We will not go for a foreign power. For our kingship is laced with an authority of the power of God. A lasting kingdom goes with the kingdom that dedicates to God. It goes with the kingdom that is in touch with God. He's made us kings and priests. I have been to places where people can put their finger on what make me extraordinary. They will say, there is something about this gentleman. He commands some authority. My wife will always say that you've got a kind of physique that is so honorable. Oh, yes. I love that one. <laughs> you command a kind of physique that is so honorable, that is so imposing. 
Oh, thank you, Betty. That's why you saw it. It is not because I am tall, but because there's something unique on my life. It's because of the office God gave me. It is the room he placed me. And the same office and room he places you and I. We are kings and priests. If the person by you is not hearing you carefully, let that person know. You are a king and a priest. For your kingship, it's not limited by time or space. Because your kingship is laced with the kingdom of God. Well, as long as God has given the kingly ability to perform the duties of a priesthood, then the kingdom is always protected against foreign invasion. This same priesthood is his prophet. Oh my God, hallelujah. This same priesthood is his prophet. So I am a king. I am a priest. And I am a prophet. In my capacity as a king, I reach out to God, does the duty of a priest, the Lord talk to me, to talk to myself, in order to embolden my throne, my dominion. Ooh. When the Lord said, have dominion. Dominion just in word, no. It means that maximize potential. Maximize your space. Wherever you are placed as a king, that is your kingdom. If we come to accept this, then who is against us or who can be against you if you laces your dominion with the priesthood power? That means nobody can clandestinely, no convocation of wicked people, Planning at your back can succeed because every plan in the hidden it shall be uncovered. Right. Why? Because you are a priest. Why? Because you are a prophet. Put your hand together for the Lord. Yeah. I have never preached to people. I've always preached Christ. But you know what? The Lord himself will take over and minister in such a way in order to meet demands and challenges in the house of God. You may be thinking that oh, somebody had told him something about me. No. Nobody. I'm not interested in that. Nobody had told me anything about you that is why the bible said the word of god is sharper than a two-edged sword the word of god brings revelations about us so there's nothing hidden that shall not be uncovered so about your office as a king every counsel of the wicked every convocation of Demonic people, wherever they plan to obstruct you, to derail you from your faith, well, as long as you are in touch with your God as a priest, there is nothing God will not reveal to you. Are you with me? Praise God. Because we fail to mature spiritually when god is talking to us or god is bringing us information 
without a lot. Without a lot. Sometimes this information will come by, by your dream. You dream. Sometimes God is, will send envoys to come and tell you something. And you have already doubted the person. He has so many ways to deal with us. To be in touch with us. There are so many ways. He warns us. There are so many ways he tells us that that person is not a friend. Are you with me? He'll tell you that person is not a friend. Because when you, the first uncovering of the backbiting and the dark things that goes behind you. The moment you uncover it, that it is what a friend indeed is doing behind you, I know that person is not a friend. Are you hearing me? Yes. A friend doesn't talk behind somebody. Are, are you hearing me? Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Because a friend, you must be bold enough to let the, person's, the person know your wrong feelings about him or her. Your doubts about him or her. Go to the person. Tell the person about it. Praise God. Is that okay? If you think I'm your friend, don't talk behind me. Any difficulty you find in my operation or in me, come to me and let's reason it out. Wouldn't that be better? Amen. That's good. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. So he made us priests he made us kings and priests unto God. And his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Revelation chapter 5. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 says that, and have made us unto our God, kings. He has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Who made us unto our God? Jesus, by reaching out to your life, by saving your life, has reconciled you to your original office of enthronement. A king is the only one that has dominion. Are you with me? You have dominion because you have a kingdom. You usurped over that kingdom because you are the king. Are you with me? Praise God. He said they shall reign on the earth. He didn't say Jesus shall reign on the earth. From that scripture he says that the kings and the priests that Jesus made unto God shall reign on the earth. Reigning means that they will rule, conquer, and be victorious. They will rule. They will conquer. They will be victorious on the earth. But for lack of knowledge, the enemy has relegated us to be servants. Or otherwise slaves. On the earth, it is not the believer that is ruling. It is not the believer that is reigning on the earth. It is some sycophant who hates your God. It is he who is the boss. 
Somebody hearing me? It is he or she who is calling the shots. Why? Because believers through lack of knowledge thought that by being born again, there are a ladder. There is what? There is automatically a ladder placed there so that we can be climbing to go to heaven. Hold on about heaven. Because if you are going to go to heaven now, it means there can't be even a medium of exchange for you. You can't even have money to buy anything. You can't have money to even pay for rent. Are you hearing me? If you are going to go to heaven now, you got born again, so you are on a ladder to go to heaven. No. Let me tell you, the approval for heaven even starts from earth. Do you hear me? To be approved for heaven starts from what? From earth. How you demonstrate your life. How you live your life of a changed person on this earth. That approves you of going there. So a lot of people say they are born again, but they are not approved on the earth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Their life is questionable. The things we do is always questionable. We have attitude. We have characters that will never enter. It will not end up. Reckless thoughts. Bad behaviors. More treatment that we give to people. On this earth, can't find a place over there. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. It says, and they shall reign over the earth. Which means that you must start overcoming. Overcome your challenges right from here. Before you start climbing the ladder. Because the Bible said, nothing unclean, nothing impure, nothing unholy shall enter into the kingdom of God. Is somebody hearing me? And they shall reign over the earth. The king must reign. The priest has authority to reign on the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God somebody. Amen. Praise God somebody. In this nation, the power of the prime minister is vested in the queen. Do you know that? Before a prime minister forms a government, he, has she or, he or she has to go and consult the queen. Is somebody hearing me? Praise God. The priest of the queen is the archbishops of Canterbury. Are you with me? Because the queen has a kingdom. Amen. The queen must consult the spiritual priesthood. Of her kingdom. To do what it does. So if the priesthood is corrupt. Eh? Eh. If the priesthood is corrupt. If the priesthood deviates from scripture. Is that right? If the priesthood fail to get in touch with God. The kingdom is in trouble. It will lead to wrong decisions and those in wrong policies. Are you with me? And those in what? Wrong policies leading to wrong decisions. Because there is no tangible, sustainable information coming from the throne. In a natural setting, in all cultures, there are kings. They have kingdoms. They have priests, which does not relate to our God. 
they have priests who relate to the devil. So their kingdom is empowered by the devil. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The priest serves as a counsel for the king. Whatever the priest says, the king follows. The priest is an inquirer. Inquire for me about this. Have you noticed that? King Saul made a grievous mistake. When he thought that God was far away from him, God wasn't listening to him, and he was challenging Samuel. Was it Samuel? He was challenging Samuel. Let God talk. And he was forcing him, let God talk. And God said, ah, ah, it's not going to talk. Because something is going to happen to the... He himself went in and consulted the witches. Because he wanted something to happen. He wanted a voice to authenticate his move, his decision. King Ahab, in waging a war to include Jehoshaphat, wanted an instruction from the prophet as to whether to go and go to war. God have already said, I'm tired with, with, with Ahab. I am going to send him to war. I will orchestrate warfare. And I will send him to the war. And I will finish him at the war. He called his prophets together. And to inquire from the prophet as to whether his hands are solid in order to outrun the opposite in the war. All other prophets are stomach prophets. You know what I mean by that? They take sogum and milk powder in the secret. So as long as the king is the one who feeds them, they always have got positive words for him. Oh, hail the queen. Oh, hail the king. Shall the king go and succeed? Sure. The king will go and succeed. In our day and age, the same thing is happening. You know, scripture says that gifts blind the wise. Gifts always blind the wise. But as long as you are receiving something from the person, even when the person is erring or making a mistake, you can't talk. In a council of determination, for as long as you are receiving something from the person, you always talk in support. Gives blind the wise. But for me, you can buy me helicopter. You lie. <laughs> buy me helicopter. Buy me anything. KFC, including KFC or China. Yeah, do anything you want to do. But as long as, as long as it is an error. It must be an error declared in love. Amen. Bible said, rebuke, exhort with long suffering. Is that what the Bible said? That is it. Rebuke, exhort with long suffering. Where we fail to rebuke, we fail to exhort, we fail to correct. Then we are raising an illegitimate fellowship. Is somebody hearing me? They shall reign on the earth. I love this. They shall reign on the earth. I'm not saying that you go to Buckingham Palace and dethrone the queen. That is not what I'm talking about. There is a kingdom God has built. And he made us kings of that kingdom. If you live in England, you are a king in the kingdom of God. Amen. Wherever you are, 
you must live like a king. Hello? You must live like a priest. What kind of priest home that there is a fight all the time? Tell me. What, 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 tell me. The priest. What kind of priesthood is that? Where love is missing completely. Where peace is missing completely. Where passion is missing completely. What kind of kingdom is that? Every priest is an intercessor. Every priest is an intercessor. Every priest must show love. Every priest must be patient. Every priest must be kind. Every priest must be gentle. Every priest must be temperate. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So even in the case whereby the word of the king has authority, don't forget that there is another office laced up with the office of a king. That is the priesthood office. The king must be temperate. The king must be patient. The king must be loving. Love your subject. The Bible said, Perfect love cast away all fears. A perfect love cast away all fears. I know my wife is an anesthetist. I don't like anesthetists. Because, they, don't tell her she's not here. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't say it. Look, if you are married to a doctor, either a man or a woman, and you don't behave yourself, you're going to go to heaven very quickly. <laughs> That's not true. You listen. That is, that is my doctrine. <laughs> you listen carefully. Listen, if you're married to them, you must behave. <laughs> Are you hearing me? If it's not true, this is the chin way, I, I don't agree with you. If it's not true, then why did the law say that no doctor must treat his family? Did you hear that? That's the law. The doctor can't treat his or her family. For fear that... That is why I love my wife. <laughs> she's, she's pretty nice, isn't it? Nice. You see the husband say, yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, Gavly Church. We're preaching, are we not? Are we not? That's it. The Bible said, confess your fault one to another and pray ye one to another. So which means that in the kingdom where there is a king, where there are spouses in the kingdom, are you understanding what I'm saying? And there is a priesthood in the kingdom, your activities must be laced with reverence to God and to one another. Perfect love cast away all fears. So now me, I love this woman. I'm not afraid. <laughs> she can hear it. She will buy me something today. That I love her. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. <laughs> the Bible said, for no one, that no one has ever destroyed himself. There is no way I can destroy myself except under demonic influence. 
But when two are together, they are the same flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mistakes comes in. There is a need for us to check where we've gone wrong and restore one to another. Praise God. We shall reign on the earth. You must reign in your business. You must reign in your business. Your business must not struggle. If you dedicate your business to God, if you always call an input from heaven to your business, you will always be successful. Any business you run without God being God not being the center of that business, it won't go anywhere. Don't even be sure on your ability. Don't be sure on your ability, the gift you have, the trade you, you are in. Don't be sure of it. Because at any time, it can fall apart. Always make sure that you call God in your personal businesses. He must always have the preeminence. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. And God prospered our hands because we have accepted his involvement in what we do. If I say your business, I am not referring necessarily to an independent business, not only in that, but wherever you work to earn a living, you must maximize space. You must prove to the people that you know what you are doing. Is that right? Yes. Don't be lazy. Because the garden of every lazy person brewed reptiles. If you are doing a public job and you are a public servant, don't just say you are already capped for your, your, your salary. Because you are capped for your salary. You go at any time. You leave at any time. You leave earlier before time. You are not deceiving anybody. You are deceiving yourself. Is somebody hearing me? You are what? Deceiving yourself. Bible says, Oh, no man anything except to love. If you go to your workplace late and you close early, you are owing your employer. Are you hearing me? You are owing your employer. If you are an independent worker and you charge for what should be done at a given time, don't play something. Yes, so that there can be an extension of time for you to recharge again. Be honest and be sincere. I am dealing with what? Reigning on the earth. Be honest and be sincere as a king and a priest. Somebody hearing me? Praise God. And they shall reign over the earth. Any rulership that has no extension will fall apart. Any rulership without extension will fall apart. Now let's, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me open your eye to how God is extending his rule. God has a kingdom. He made Jesus the king of kings. And he made us kings and priests. Hello, church. Amen. Amen. How does God extend his rulership? How does his kingdom extend? He extends his kingdom on earth through us. That's how he does it. That's how he extends it. 
So anything you do on this earth, in the office and in the room of a king, by cheating people, is that right? You don't like that one? Okay. I'm not talking about you, brother. <laughs> Listen. By cheating people, you know what you are doing? You are misrepresenting the kingdom of God. As a king, we are placed in a position that can be envied. Am I teaching somebody here? We are at a position where can be, we can be envied. Now, the forces of darkness are envying you. Human beings are envying you. Because they fail to understand the insight you have over things on the earth. You are the only person on this earth who knows the secret of God. Hello. Hi. The secret things are hidden from the world. But they are revealed unto you. How am I going to put it here? Every war, every bombing, everything that is going on, homosexual activity, blah, 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 as we are always concerned about and are contending it. Amen. It is not coming so strangely. We know that it will happen. Right. Is somebody hearing me? We know that it is going to happen. The only place you have to look at is to make sure that your heart is not taken by it. Because it is easy that, hmm, can you imagine, one day I come to church and I say, you know that, God made a mistake and he made me a man. <laughs> I am a woman. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm a woman. It can come. It can happen. It's a spirit. If you open up to it, it will swallow you. So what is the gay pastor doing behind the pulpit of God? What is the lesbian pastor doing behind the pulpit? Is that a reform? Change? Along with scripture? Or get out from there. Uh, are you understanding what I'm saying? God has nothing to do with a gay pastor. He has nothing to do with a gay bishop. He has nothing to do with a lesbian pastor. I'm telling you, he has not. He has nothing to do with them. None of their function. And nothing of their function actually touches God or reaches God. All that you see happening. It's in line with scripture. That many shall fall away. Terrible things will begin to happen. But make sure that your heart is not caught into that. They shall reign on the earth. Everybody say with me. They shall reign on the earth. They shall reign on the earth. Praise God. Let's say it again. They shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. They shall reign on the earth. We must be first in every roll call. First in every roll call because God has given us wisdom and knowledge to solve the earth problems. Can we say amen to that? Amen. God has given us wisdom and knowledge to address issues on this earth. 
you are a king. The Bible said where the word of the king is, there is authority. Where the word of the king is, there is authority. Now, where does the king get that authority from? From the priest. He gets the authority from the priest. Hallelujah. In other words, Christ gave us that authority. He said, go ye into the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Anyone who believe shall be saved. Anyone who believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They will lay their hand on the sick, and the sick will recover. Do you know what is backing that statement? That is the priesthood authority. It is only the priest that has the power to invoke God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. When we begin to respond to this scripture, we are responding in the capacity of an enviable position authority as a king. That nobody can challenge you, nobody can confront you. I hope you are getting blessed. Amen. I'm going to wrap it quickly. I was at the Hinley Green. Bible reading uh, meeting. Prior to me reading, uh, somebody who was reading, in fact, the output is not even as loud as this. The output will be 15 or 20 times lower than this. And they were passing cars. Cars were passing engine, revving, horn, blowing. Then there came a gentleman in a house somewhere. Then he came. He came to me. And he said. When is this thing going to end? <laughs> and I said. End? No. It's 24-7. It's going to be 24 hours. On the clock. It will end on Monday evening. That's how it's going to end. Is this thing happening. Going on. With the legal backing. I said, I don't know. I don't know. Is there any problem? He said, my children can't sleep. <laughs> what? My children can't sleep. The, 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 the sound is in my room. I said, no. Then I said, no. You can't be that truthful. Look at cars revving. Horns blowing. And the sound, this, this sound completely swallowed up even the sound of the microphone. And you are not serious. And I said, you are not serious. You can't be serious. There's nothing I can do about it. He left. So when the pastor came, I said, well, that's what the guy is saying. The pastor, you know what he did? He didn't even look at that direction. The man was there, took his, um, uh, his uh, uh, phone, smartphone, and was filming us. It was filming. Do you know what the pastor was doing? The pastor was just dancing in front of the film. <laughs> oh, yeah. The pastor was just dancing. He was dancing. He was dancing and speaking in tongues, just dancing. Hallelujah. And I understood that completely. You must mock them. And that's a holy mocking. You can't do anything against the law of God. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. The pastor was a move. He was just dancing. Then he came and said, Bishop, don't mind him. And I said, well, I have already given him my portion. The word has pierced darkness. So he has come to react. Amen. You know, he didn't stop there. He called the police. He called, accident. he called the police about three times. No police came. <laughs> no police came. They are too busy. Do you know what? The kingdom of God must superimpose on this earth. That's what the Bible said. 
You must make that kingdom of God to superimpose his authority on this earth because the structures are in you. Oh, yes. amen. Say amen. amen. Who said it, it, it can be you may think that it is by law. And the lazy ones will say, they say don't preach. They say don't witness. Come on. Go to the marketplace. Hallelujah. Preach the word of God. Amen. Just preach it as a command. Preach it in love. Preach it and make an opportunity, give an opportunity for the people to respond. Amen. Preach it in love. Say amen. amen. I've not received any summons yet. No summons is even going to come. England is not as harmful as we think. England is not as dangerous as we think. England is not as resisting to the scripture as we think. It is the believers who have put it in their mind. Are you hearing me? We put that in our mind. In order to fail God. By failing God, you are failing yourself. Let the kingdom of God rule on the earth. For they shall reign on the earth. Reign in the social sectors. Reign in the political circles. Reign in every human structure. Reign. Reign. Let the kingdom of God reign. Praise the name of the Lord. There is this politician who has placed this thing on a car. In, 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 a, in a rapport, we're talking. He said first he put fish. He placed the sticker fish on the car. That was in piercing. What is fish? Is it shark or whale? He said he went and looked for a sticker, a proper sticker that has a message. And this is what is on the sticker. Jesus is Lord. He is the king of all kings Amen. and we reign over all kingdoms Amen. and they place it on his boot car boot and the bumper now when he drive to parliament everybody is concerned about that everybody is worried about that you can openly declare your faith you can openly say who i say i am a christian the Lord God is my Lord and my King. I've just put a sticker on my bumper and it's worrying you. Now how about if I call him inside parliament? They said they left him. <laughs> Did you hear that? They do what? They left him. Your God must be God. Our Lord must be Lord. He must be Lord in your life. He must be Lord in our lives. He will protect you. Amen. He will preserve you. Amen. He will keep you from being touched Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For as long as you can talk, keep on talking. Amen. For as long as you can pray, keep on praying. Amen. The agency for now is to replicate the kingdom of heaven on this earth it must be seen in your corrections it must be seen in our testimonies in our praises it must be seen in what we do jesus is lord in conclusion what has this man been where has this man been going to every sunday you know the man i'm talking about that is me i live in a community i live in a community 
And nobody goes to church. Now they are confused. Oh. Either I am a cop or he is something. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the challenge around them, or the block of knowing my profession, they come to settle that I'm a cop. I'm a CID. I told them I'm not a cop. They will still, they will not, they will not accept my version. So I said, well, all right. Whatever you believe I am, if you say I'm a cop, I'm a cop. So now to them, I'm a cop. But now they're still confused. Every Sunday, this man is in a suit and a tie. He's driving out of the house. Now the other day, the person came again and I said, listen carefully to me. I am a vicar, if you will understand that. I am a vicar. Oh, you are a vicar. So you are a cop and a vicar. I said, yes, both. <laughs> That's right. I am a cop and I'm a vicar, both. <laughs> Praise God. I am a cop and a vicar. Don't hide your identity. Don't hide your identity. There's a portion they are keeping for themselves, a cop and a vicar. Praise God. And of course, I can let God arrest them on that block. Amen. <laughs> Hold your hands. Join your hands right now. Hallelujah. Join your hands right now. Join your hands right now. Hallelujah. What has affected your reign? What has affected your reign? What has affected your reign? What has encroached on your reign? God has given you a throne. He has given you rulership. He has given you dominion. He has power attached to it. You can command and there will be resolved. Yes. You can bind and it will bind. Oh, yes. You can lose and it will lose. Amen. Whatsoever you say shall come to pass. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now what has limited that? This morning before we go, I want you to lift up your voice to God and say, Lord, I want to rediscover. I want to rediscover my position in your kingdom. Which I, which I have given up this morning, this morning my faith, my faith touched, touched on your promises, on your promises. I, have I have received them stare my, my faith put life words in me, in me. Give, me give me that power to maximize, to maximize your, kingdom your kingdom on this earth, on this earth. in the name of Jesus Put life, Put life in my mouth. In my mouth. Whatever, I say Whatever I say must come to pass. Come to pass. Father, Father, I decree, I decree order, order on this earth. On this earth. I, decree I decree order, order in, my home. in my home. I decree, I decree order, order in my life. In my life. I decree, I decree order. order in your church in the name of Jesus I subdue every kingdom because your word says such kingdom will be for our God and his Christ and he will reign over it in Jesus mighty name with the rediscovery of my authority I will function in love wherever in Jesus name in Jesus name father in the mighty name of Jesus we take divine authority against the kingdom of darkness against every usurping kingdom we take authority over every structure put in place to hinder the manifestation of the offices you have called us to. You were declared we are kings and priests. What a limited authority we have. Unlimited authority we have on this earth. Lord to proclaim 
to proclaim our dominion, to establish our dominion, to establish our liberty, to establish our success, to establish our victory, to establish, oh God, peace in our lives and on this earth. And it's our declaration that we declare in Jesus' mighty name, there shall be order. There shall be order. Order in our lives. Order on the earth. Order in the family. Order in our workplaces. We subdue in Jesus' mighty name every activity of evil to displace us in Jesus' mighty name. God make you rule, Amen. conquer, have victory Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm asking your week to be a demonstration Amen. of your newfound grace. Amen. Rule in the midst of every enemy. Amen. And God exalt his throne over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for coming.